My name is Patricia Anderson. I'm the Emerging Technologies Librarian for the Health Sciences Libraries at the University of Michigan. People ask me, what the heck does that mean? What is an Emerging Technologies Librarian? So what I'm trying to do is go out and look at social and emerging technologies and pick out what are the exciting, interesting, most useful things and then come back to my community and share that information with them in a variety of ways. So I blog, I do classes, I do consultations, I talk with people, people contact me with questions. One of the things that interests me with using the social media for science is the idea of translational research. I was at a presentation where the, one of the NIH bigwigs was doing a presentation on translational research and outside the faculty kind of mobbed me and goes, what the heck is translational research? Because it was a new idea. My understanding of translational research is that it's really kind of two-pronged. One is sort of the open science idea of getting people to share and pool data so that you can maximize the impact of results. It's sort of like systematic reviews but more at the origin instead of, of the data, instead of after the publications. You know, so you're pooling data and sharing it and facilitating and enriching discovery. Another big part of it, though, is that bench-to-bedside process where you're trying to get clinicians to adopt the new discoveries, the new things that make a difference in people's lives. So we discover some really cool new way to treat some big clinical problem. And what we find is it takes 10, 20 years to really become adopted by the general public and to come into general practice. And you think of all of the loss in between time of people who could have been helped, but we were waiting for adoption to reach critical mass. So how do we facilitate that? And that's the marketing and promotion and discovery of these new concepts, new treatments, and getting them sort of word of mouth out to the people who actually treat, you know, the, the clinicians on the front lines. One of the ways I see of doing that is through using social media. So when the information is in the big name resources like YouTube, it becomes more discoverable, again, because of search engine, kind of the bias of the search engines to those big names. It becomes more discoverable, even though there's some question about credibility. But more people are putting high-quality information in YouTube. So the American Diabetes Association has a whole series of videos in YouTube, and they have their own YouTube channel, and they have their branding, and they're getting information out there. So by putting it there, it's going to reach a much broader audience than even if it's on the American Diabetes Association's own website. So what's happening is that there are people in YouTube who have made a second career out of surfing the web, discovering these videos on the research websites, and then reposting them to YouTube in their account. So with the YouTube having the video there makes it more discoverable, makes it more accessible, and these things get a lot of views there. They probably get a lot more views in YouTube than they do on the original website where they were first hosted. Um, embeds are a way that you can take information from a website and make it granular, put it in a lot of places but it basically allows you to put your content in many different places and have other people re-broadcast it for you. So it's another marketing device. If you're working with one of the tools that allows embeds, YouTube, SlideShare, Flickr, you know, most of the social media tools now allow embeds. Every time someone else embeds your content, they're spreading your word, spreading your message. And of course, it links back to the original source with the embed code. So they can track it back, if they want to, to discover again the original source. SlideShare is a social media tool for make, 
putting out your slides, your PowerPoint presentations, PowerPoint, um, open office, you know, a number of other formats, PDFs, so you can put those into SlideShare. What happens when you put it into SlideShare is a couple of different things that you can do. One, it allows you the embeds, so you put your presentation in and it's allowing other people to discover it, look at it, view it, and place your slides in their blog post or web page. It makes it very easy for you to do so also, so it's allowing you to place your content in um, a variety of locations very easily. Um, and they've added some extra features, so you can do a slide cast. So if you have audio, split it off as an MP3 file, you can create a podcast by connecting that audio to your slides and people can click through very easily and flexibly and you can literally click on the slide you want and the audio will start exactly at that point. There's a slide presentation that I put up two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, when I gave the presentation, I had, I think, 15 people show up. I put the slides online. The slides were put on the SlideShare homepage. They were a featured presentation, and then the slides were picked up by Mashable.com and entered into one of their blog entries. And within two weeks, I have over 5,000 views of those slides. I would sum this up with the three main points of using the social technologies with science would be branding, communication, and discovery. So branding to get your name associated with the discovery of your work. Communication to facilitate the bench to bedside process by using all of the communication avenues available. And discovery to facilitate discovery of your work and to empower you with discovering through building a science community in the social spaces.